So we're going to work on making a rectangular pattern. Um, so we'll go to a new part. We're going to do a really simple shape. Um, let's go start a 2D sketch. We'll start with a rectangle. And we'll make it a 3 by 5 rectangle. So three, uh, 5 across, 3 high. We're going to make, I guess, something that could look like a pencil holder or a paintbrush holder or something like that. It doesn't really matter what it is because we're working on how to do this. We're going to put a circle that is anywhere in this area. Don't put it anywhere specifically. Just kind of pick a spot up here. Make a circle that is um, 0.25, a quarter of an inch across. And then we're going to dimension it. We're going to say we want that circle, the center of it, to be a half inch from the top. And to be a half inch from the side. Now, let's say we want to put a, a bunch of those evenly spaced on this thing so that we could you know, have a bunch of places to put our brushes or pencils or whatever. Well, that's going to be, that'll be a pain to make that circle again and again, which is where this comes in, the rectangular pattern. So we click on that rectangular pattern, and then we choose the thing we want to repeat. Well, obviously, that would be this circle. So we click that once. It turns bright blue, and then we have to tell it the two directions we want to go. So I click on this little arrow, and I select, see how this line here, we have choices. We do that one or this one. This one goes left to right. So I'm going to click that, and you'll see what happens. All right, it starts putting the pattern left to right. It only does here, you can see, it does a total of two of them, one here, one here. But it's going the wrong way. So we're going to flip the direction. There we go. And I don't want two. I think I want five total. That looks good, doesn't it? Yeah. If I did six, it would put it past that, because it would repeat the pattern. I could expand the size of my rectangle if I wanted, but in this case, five looks like it fits nicely and evenly. Then I choose my other direction. So I go here and I click on that arrow and I say, all right, now I want to go down. And that's the right direction in this case. And I think I can fit one more in. So I'm going to go three. There we go. And I hit OK. And there they are. All done. Don't have to worry about doing each one individually. I can finish the sketch. I can extrude out the part that aren't the circles. So here, like so. I'm going to take them out two inches. And then I'm going to show you another quick little feature. You can, instead of having this to you know, have nice corners, sharp corners like this, you can give it a more finished look by rounding the corners out. That's what fillet will do. So you notice in the picture here that it will, and it'll come up here. There you go. You notice in the picture here that it just makes the edges curved or rounded. So we'll click that. And 0.125, that's eighth of an inch. I think that'll work. If I click on an edge, you'll notice it curves that edge. We'll zoom in a little bit. See, it makes that edge curved. And I'm going to do that with every edge on the top of our pencil holder. And I'm going to do it on these sides, too. And don't forget the one you can't see. And I'm going to click OK. And that gives it an, a better, or to my way of looking at it, a nice curved feel. You can see. So I'm going to make sure that I have this set to the front. So let's see. Actually, I'm going to rotate it. I want this to be the front. That makes this the top. That'll work. And I'm going to save it. We're just going to call it um, rectangular pattern practice or something like that. So save as and I rectangular practice exam pattern example. I've actually done this before. So I'm going to save it as that and save. And yes, in my case, I want to overwrite. Yours won't say that. All right, now we're going to make a drawing for it. 
So go new, drawing. We gotta get our sheets the right size. So we're gonna edit sheet to A. Get rid of this larger block and install that one. And then we're gonna place our, and we'll fill that out later. Remember you go to the big I and you go down to I properties and then you go to summary and you fill out all that. Um, I'm not gonna worry about that right now. I'm gonna place the base, there's my front and my right, but the most important one is of course the top. And we'll do an isometric over here. Okay, change this view so that it's shaded. I think that's right. I hit okay. There we go. Now we're going to dimension this thing. So annotate dimension. We'll give it the whole width. So from this side to this side is going to be five inches. No problem. And this from he this side to this side is going to be two inches. And the depth of it is going to be three inches. I'm going to use this one up here to show a person or show the person making it how far apart to make these circles and how big to make them. So first of all, we're going to mention the size of the circles. So I'm going to do that by going, I think here, Diam this says the diameter is 0.25 inches. And then I'm going to give the radius of these um, fillets as well. Now with this one, I know it's not 0.13. That I, it's, I need to go another decimal place. So I'm going to go here and click on the one that shows three decimal places. Hit OK. And now I get 0.125, which is what I know it is. Let's see. Now, i got to give them the distances from, say, this side to the center of that circle. And then between circles, so from here to here. I'm going to have to do that a few of times. I mean, we can't just assume that they will assume how far it is. So I think we have to do two more, and then there, we can assume the last one. Or maybe I'll do this. I'll go here to here like that. And that gives, that's enough. I know I didn't give them this one, but I've already told them the whole thing's five. So five minus one, two, three, four inches tells them that should be also be an inch. And then we'll do the same kind of thing on the side, here to here, half inch, here to the center of that, it's an inch, and center of that to the center of that is also an inch. And I, we don't need to tell them this last half inch here to here because once again, we know this is three inches. That's this dimension here, it's this one, three inches, so they can do this attraction. Let's see, am I missing anything? Would they need to know anything else in order to do this? I think they'll be all right from there. So we can put on our information, save it, and as a, and then print it as a PDF and save it, uh, save that, which will do that automatically, and then submit it to Schoology.